Next example, we have sine of x is equal to negative 4.291. All right, so if you are on your toes, you're going to recognize something very quickly here. So if you see it, the issue right away, pat yourself on your back. All right, don't strain yourself, but, you know, give yourself a little bit of a uh, attaboy on the back right now. All right, but if not, let's walk through this. Let's do what we would normally do. We would use our calculator. We would say x is equal to sine inverse of negative 4.291. Uh, and your calculator will give you a big fat oops, a big fat error message. And it'll say something like uh, domain error. And that's because remember that the range of the sine function is from negative 1 to positive 1, and negative 4.291 is out of range. There's no angle that has a sine value that's negative 4.291. So in this case, there is no solution. The cosine of x is equal to 0 0.7164. We're going to walk pretty quickly through this one. We're going to take the uh, inverse cosine function, the arc cosine, or the cosine inverse of both sides, and we would get x is equal to cosine inverse of 0 0.7164. Great. All right, use your calculator and crunch that, and we would get x is approximately 0 0.7722. That is the reference angle. It's positive and it's acute. If you get something out of your calculator that is between 0 and 1.57, that is definitely the reference angle. All right, so that's awesome. So then we're thinking about where is our focus here? We are looking to find where is the cosine function positive, okay? Where is the cosine function positive? That's going to be in the right side of the axis in quadrant one and quadrant four. All right, and so now let's think about how do we find those angle measures? Well, we know that our First quadrant angle is given to us straight from our calculator. That's awesome. We know that it is in the first quadrant because it's between 0 and 1.57. Great. And now let's think about how will we find our fourth quadrant angle. Starting our angle at the positive x-axis, coming all the way around until we hit that terminal side, but not quite all the way to 2 pi, so we want to think about 2 pi subtracting our reference angle. In other words, 2 pi minus that 0 0.7722, and that's going to be 5.5110. Checking our work. Oh, we do such good work. That's awesome. Great job. All right, and that one's done. We've got tangent of x is equal to 1 third. Give that a shot. So x is equal to the tan inverse of one third or 0.3333, right? We get an approximation of that angle from our calculator of 0 0.3218. And probably good to remind ourselves that this is really a radian angle measure, 0 0.3218 radians. Um, so I know that it's harder for you to visualize radians on the unit circle, but this is what we're talking about here. We know that this is our reference angle because it's positive and it's acute. And so now let's think about where are we focusing on? We know that tangent is positive where? That's the first quadrant and the third quadrant. So we need to find an angle in the first quadrant in the third quadrant. Half of our work is done because we have our first quadrant angle from our calculator. Great. Okay, so first quadrant angle is 0 0.3218. Now how would we find this angle that we uh, are looking at in the third quadrant that begins on the positive x-axis and ends in that third quadrant? Well, we've gone past pi by how much? 
by that 0 0.3218. Okay, so we're going to take that pi and add that 0 0.3218 to it, and we should get a we should get an angle that has an approximate measure of 3.4634. All right, check those answers. They look good to me. And another successfully done problem. Now, the last problem we're going to do together is a little bit different. Okay, so we've been preparing for this, and I have full confidence in you. So we're looking at this. 7 times the cosine squared of x is equal to 1. Okay, a couple things right away. We do not have our cosine of x isolated, so that's the first thing we're going to need to do. We're going to need to remove that 7 and remove that squaring, okay? So let's first uh, divide out the 7, and we would end up with cosine squared of x is equal to 1 7. Then take the square root of both sides of the equation, and we would end up with the cosine of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 7. All right, take 1 7 and then take the square root of that in your calculator and you should get an approximation plus or minus 0 0.3780. All right, now we have done no, we've, we have done nothing to find x yet. All we've done is set up our equation like what we've seen before. Okay, so we've eliminated the 7 and eliminated the squaring. Okay, so now it's time. We are going to use our inverse cosine function to find x. We're going to do it first for the positive form of this value. So cosine of x is equal to positive 0 0.3780 that would mean x is equal to cosine inverse of positive 0 0.3780. And so we would get an approximation from our calculator, um, 1.1832. We can say that this is our reference angle because it's positive and acute. Great. All right. And then we would also want to do this process for the negative because this is plus or minus. So let's do the or minus part over here. X is equal to cosine inverse of negative 0 0.3780. Great. And we would get that value from our calculator, 1.9584. So fantastic. All right, so now let's look at that cast diagram. Great. Um, and let's think to ourselves, self, cosine positive. That's going to be on the right-hand side. Self, where is cosine negative? That's going to be on the left-hand side. So, self, where are we going to find solutions? In this case, we're going to find solutions in all four quadrants. Let's focus on the positive stuff first. So thinking about the right-hand side of the axis, we have our value from the first quadrant. We are going to need a value from the fourth quadrant. How would we find this measure? We're going all the way around here, not quite to 2 pi, so this is going to be found by uh, 2 pi minus this 1.1832. That's going to give us a value of 5.1000. All right. Now let's think about where cosine is negative. We already have something for this, right? This 1.9584 falls right in that second quadrant, so that's our Q2 angle. And now we just need our Q3 angle. So we're going to go beyond pi by that reference angle. So pi plus 1.1832, all right, which is approximately 4.3248. Double check those answers all the way down. And I think we're all in good shape. Now, one thing that you might want to keep in mind is when you have a cosine squared of some value, 
that's really cosine of that value and then that value squared and then that value multiplied by 7 should get to positive 1. And those are all good. The last example I'm going to leave for you to do on your own. But I am going to give you the solution so you can check your work. Are you ready? Okay. Um, these are the solutions for 5 times the sine squared of x is equal to 3. The first quadrant solution is 0 0.8867. The second quadrant solution is 2.2549. The third quadrant solution is 4.0283. And the fourth quadrant solution is 5.3965. All right, that's all she wrote. And boy, what a ride with this solving trig equations. Well done. You have my admiration and respect. All right, I'll see you next time.